I thought this is a new plan. Yeah, you want to try these? Okay. Oh, okay, guys, it is a 11.30 on the dot. We're going to go ahead and call this meeting to order. Um, first things first, attendance. So I'll start with Susie. Um, Haley Glass, present. Levi Chi, present. Devon McKinney, present. Matthew Rathbun, present. William Coates, present. Roger Serrera, present. Amelia Federico, present. Perfect. And would anybody like to volunteer to do the reading of the mission statement? Check, go for it. To support the evolving needs of the MSU student, MSU family students, uh, advocating in their best interest to enhance the university experience and opportunities. Right. And has everybody had a chance to review the agenda? Make sure everything on there is looking accurate, making sure there's not anything we needed to add or adjust. All right, then I go ahead and motion to approve the agenda for today's meeting. Seconded. Any objections? Any abstentions? All in favor? Aye. Okay. Perfect. Um, with that, we technically start public comment at 1135. Looks like we have a guest here. Are you going to be participating in public comment or just kind of watching over the meeting? Uh, I, I, yeah, I can, I can say something. <laughs> yeah. If you want to, um, we should we start that right at 1135? Or? Yeah. Do we need to start it right at 11 30 something or I mean you can make a motion to move, move it, it just to right, right now. Be formal, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um our motion since we're done with the housekeeping, we just move up the public or the public comment time to now at eleven thirty. Second two. Any objections? Any abstentions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Perfect. So you have the floor. You have five minutes. Yeah, you can talk. Um, yeah, so I'm just here. Um, I've been a student for um, this is my first semester here, and I'm just bringing up an issue of um, that I've heard other students complain about, and I've dealt with myself, which is um, the fact that affording parking every day is um, a big burden. Um, since I've been here, I have definitely had to make some sacrifices to try to get to school and not every day and um, have received tickets like three times the cost for that. Um, and I'm just here to speak up for to see if there's any type of affordable option that Metro can incorporate into tuition or work with the um, vendors that are working with parking to try and alleviate the burden of students that are just trying to come to their education. Um, so to uh, comment on that, uh, there, right. is there, I just wanted to interject because this is your time. I just want to make sure you're, you got everything you needed to. Yeah, I just, I, yeah, I think, um, that's pretty much the gist of why I'm here. I've been checking in for the last month and then trying to see like what solutions might be on the table. Thank you, sure. sure. Uh, and she has also been talking to me, Matt, and Siobhan, just for reference. Um, but if you want to have an address. That, you go. That, that was all I had. Um, so uh, this is something we've been wanting to uh, kind of implement uh, as well, you know, uh, implement some sort of assistance program to work with parking. Uh, it's just the people that we work with that are in charge of all the parking lots on our campus and stuff. This uh, uh, institution or organization, say, it's called AHEC. Uh, they're the one who runs the parking lots, charge of the meters, in charge of uh, payment and all that stuff. And uh, one of our own members, Mike, and a couple of the people who try to work with them when it comes to the issues like this. But it's kind of a hard thing to do mainly because um, as much as we try to talk to them about uh, helping students out when it comes to parking and stuff like that, they are very, I guess, um, resistant to the idea of trying to implement certain changes. And why is that? What is their reasoning for not trying to help students afford education every day? I'm going to defer that to a former member. Okay. 
Me? Oh, okay. Hello? So, AHAC is very difficult to deal with, especially if we try to go after their main source of funding. They are a state institution, meaning the legislative uh, people up in the Capitol are the ones who created AHAC. So, we have been in talks with like CU Denver, CCD, and trying to find a better approach than going through AHAC because we have already told them multiple times this issue and brought it up to them, but they don't listen to us. So we're thinking of working through that avenue instead of going through the day heck. Mm -hmm. um, and is there no way for the two to intermingle some type of collaboration with charging tuition and then charging it into tuition so people can just have it. They'll still get their money, but like tuition is just another fee that's being sourced through for parking or. That's there's been a discussion with admin about that. <clears throat> Excuse me before. Um, we are trying. I think the steps forward would be to actually ask the student body. Because not everyone has a car, not everyone can afford a car. Um, People well, can only afford oh, as our RTD, and so their their approach is also trying to see if raising the overall tuition is the best option for for this, because again, that might not be a, we might think that's the best best option intention wise, but that also raises costs of tuition overall, and how much that is, I don't know. Well, I was thinking that it could be something that people can opt in and out of like they do with health insurance. So, you know, it still would be something that they can select, but there's not forced upon them. Uh -huh. And go from there, I don't know. I'm just... No, yeah, for sure. Thank there's... you for that. That has been something that was discussed as well. An opt-in kind of option for... Yeah, there are comments, but I had us at five minutes for that speaker. It does look like we have somebody else. So should we... Yeah, I mean, yeah, we have to yeah. respect the other speakers. I think we're going to make the same comment. Um, there's already a fee in place for parking for student tuition. And that's why if you register your plates with uh, AHEC and then uh, you get a reduced rate for parking if you say you're a student. Are you talking about the parking passes for the semester? Not the parking passes. There's already a fee attached to students' tuition for parking. So whenever um, you go and, uh, and the machines ask you if you're a student, that's why you get a reduced rate. Oh, you're talking about the yearly weekends. Yeah. I okay. Well, I know the time's up, so I guess I'll just let that sit. Sorry, Shay. You can always come and visit us in the office again and talk about this further. The former members are a great resource for that because they've fought this battle a little bit before. Sorry, we keep trying to fight this battle. Okay. Um ongoing struggle. Leslie, I don't know if you wanted to unmute yourself or if you just want us to read off your comment and respond to it. You guys want me to read it out for sure? Read it if it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Leslie says, um, I know this isn't an access center, but what are you going to do about the teachers that do not accept the extension or anything that has to do with students' disability? Most of the ones with uh, non civil disability. Most students do not uh, or don't come because they believe the teacher has the final say. And just want to put that here. Okay. So. Okay. So we had, of course, people want to raise their hands. Um, Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Please come by. I'm, I'm free after the meeting too. If you want to discuss more. Okay, we'll do. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. Yes. And then he can go first. I was gonna say I saw Victor, Patrick, and Amelia raise their hands. Um, Leslie, thank you first of all for expressing your concerns. Um, and second, if you were to talk to the actor, um, especially for non feeble disabilities. I go to the access center. Um, they're really willing to help you uh, with uh, talking to your professors and um, them being that kind of, uh, I guess, that me me mediator between the professor and the student. Um, I would say contact the access center to be able to help you a little bit more um, in terms of what we can do, but maybe former. Have a little bit more. Yeah, I'll turn it over to Will. Um, from what I am gathering from this message, Leslie, and please correct me if I'm wrong, 
it seems like the professor wasn't accepting something from the, potentially from the access center is what I'm understanding, which is a larger issue actually. Maybe I'm just reading in between the lines, but is that what you're trying to say? Like you came to a teacher or a professor and they didn't give you the ex or give you an extension for X, Y, and Z, but you had, you know, maybe you or someone you knew has a disability. And that's why they needed the extension, but they didn't give it to them either anyway. That's no care center issue. It sounds like a complaint. Yes. Blame an actual. Hey, Stephen. Yes. If they have a ADA complaint, or I don't know if ADA is the right word here, maybe not, but sure. where who should we refer them to? Of course, starting with the access center, but because it is, it's a disability related one, based on what they're saying, so. The access center can start with doing the advocating, but that's also sort of a Title IX situation. So I would also say double dipping both access center and OEO with this. Okay. Were you able to hear that, Leslie? Yeah, I'm sorry, Leslie. I could speak up if you want, unless someone wants to. What I say. Yeah. Well, let I mean they speak first. Keep in mind the time because I only have about yeah. a minute left for this. Yeah, I was just going to say um, I am also a student who has um, had a similar situation with um, ACA, like my professors before. And what I have done is reached out to my accessibility coordinator because what their their whole job is to advocate for you as one of the students on their caseload. And so that's where I would start. And then if there needs to be something outside of that process, um, I think we should continue this conversation and we can support um, to our best extent. Um, as Stephen did note, so this might get into a Title IX um, situation where I don't think we would be able to support, but I would say start with your accessibility coordinator first and make sure that you have your access letter um, with you when you go into that meeting um, to let your uh, coordinator know. We have a phone number or website we can put in the chat. Yeah, let me pull it up. We're going to try to find a website or a link or a number for you, Leslie. So just hold on for a few minutes, please. For the access center. Yeah. That's the time. Yeah, I'm sorry. That was all the time that I have for this one. We're at 1143. Other speakers. It does not appear so. I motion that we give her we give her the extra time that is still left for the public comment so we can figure this out real quick. I'll second that. Any objections? Any abstentions? All in favor? Aye. You to this into the chat. So again, to comment on what's in the chat as well, um, as a point of information, start with your access coordinators and the access center. And as you do that, also Office of um, Equal Opportunity, so OEO. So the Access Center is phone number 303-615-0200. And then the um, Office of Equal Opportunity, that is... Uh, I don't see a phone number unless someone else to see. Yeah, phone number. Oh, yeah, I got it. 303-615-0036. So, again, with this one, I would say yeah, that as a point of information. Definitely with 
suggest the access center and if they say go to OEO, then for sure. Awesome. All right. Um, and since we have nobody else here for public comment, we gave the rest of the time here to Leslie. That's pretty much all the time that we had for that. Um, so let's go ahead and move forward to. Thank you for coming, Leslie. Business. Um, we have the second read and the voting of the sustainability amendment. Um, so let's pull it up one more time. We'll go over the one change. We'll through it one more time. Should we read out all of it or just that one book? Um, we don't have too much on the agenda for today, but I will leave that up to the council. Do we want to do another full read of it so that you guys can remember everything that was on it? Or do you guys just want us to go over the one change that was made? I think just the one change. Yeah, I'll check there's no one change. Yeah. Okay, perfect. All right, so if you want to go ahead and scroll down, Brandon, the one change that we made is that line facilitate access to essential resources and opportunities for students or that support students' personal development, career advancement, and academic success. Before it was kind of like providing basic necessities um, and needs to students um, for those reasons. So it was a little bit more broad and less achievable of a specific item. So we just kind of reworded it to make it more towards what it was actually meant to be. Any questions, comments, concerns? First vote. I'll second that. Any objections? Any abstentions? I, um, we can just do that as a vocal vote, right? Um, all in fa favor of passing this amendment to the Sustainability Committee's guidelines. Say aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? Why does everybody look at me when there's objections? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm looking around the table. All right, so then that amendment goes ahead and passes. Congrats, Victor. <laughs> Next up, also from the Sustainability Committee, we have a resolution for participating in AHA Week. Um, I'm just going to go over it. Are you sharing the full screen so it's still up there? Or do you need to reshare? Okay, perfect. Um, do you want to do the repair? You go, let me do it. I, okay, so this is a resolution for us to participate in the Auraria Homeless and Hunger Awareness Week. Uh, Victor and I co wrote this um, and sponsored by the ASCP. Um, abstract to build upon our relationship with the Auraria Sustainable Campus Program, also known as ASCP, and continue our mission of supporting evolving student needs. The Sustainability Committee of SGTSAC wants to utilize the Green Purchasing Fund um, to assist with Auraria Homeless and Hunger Awareness Week, also known as AHA Week. Um, SGTSAC would use Sustainability Green Purchasing Funds to purchase catering for AHA Week just for one of the days and host a jacket and blanket drive to eventually give out to our constituents during AHA Week. Whereas the Metropolitan State University Student Government, the Student Advocacy Council's mission is to support the evolving needs of MSU Denver students by advocating in their best interest to enhance the university experience and opportunities. Whereas we as SGTSAC acknowledge the unpredictable weather, unpredictable weather of Denver and the risk associated with this. Whereas SGTSAC recognizes that a population of our constituents are low income and are unhoused, there's also a large population extending beyond the campus with these same circumstances. These individuals can be severely impacted by weather, especially with winter fast approaching. Whereas we would like to aid our fellow students and individuals at our institution to be better prepared for the upcoming, upcoming winter, this would in turn fit into our values as a council to provide the best experience for our constituents. Whereas AHA Week is a well-known event on campus and is a great opportunity to connect with students and address their ever-changing needs. Therefore, be it resolved, SGTSAC will collect jackets and blankets during a five-week period. 
ranging from October 14th through November 15th using cardboard boxes at established MSU-based buildings and departments. SGTSEC will help ASCP to distribute these blankets and jackets to students in need on campus. Um, therefore, it be hereby it be further resolved, SGTSAC will match every blanket and jacket donation up to $1,000 in value total. Um, therefore, be it hereby further resolved, we would use SGTSAC office and ASCP office to sort and store our collections. Any excess clothing we do not use during AHA week will be donated to a nonprofit of the Sustainability Committee's choosing. Therefore, be it hereby further resolved to assist with the programming occurring during AHA week, SGTSAC will cover the cost of catering for one of the days utilizing the sustainability funds. Do you guys have any questions, comments, concerns about our want to participate in AHA week through our version of a clothing drive? Um, well, there an amount, I don't. I, for matching a thousand dollars in value okay. is what we decided on. Matt. Uh, not the whole sustainability budget. It is not. We have an eight thousand okay. dollar budget. I just want to make sure I thought it was one of the smaller ones. No, we expanded it a little bit from uh, previous years. Um with the budget committee. I just want to make sure. Okay. Further questions, concerns? Um, it's more of just a, uh, a clarification question. Yeah. Will the clothes, will the like materials from the clothing drive be for MSU students, Auraria students, or will it be for like the larger Denver community of unhoused of people dealing with being unhoused? First, it would be for uh, students on campus, like MSU students and Auraria students as a whole. We pitched it to CU Denver and to. CCD today at SACAP meeting, and they both wanted to be a part of it. So it's going to look like it's going to be a transitional scene. But any excess that we don't use would be donated to the larger surrounding Denver community. So the goal is for it to go to both. Yes. But I mean, if we only collect a certain amount and our students need those, it's going to be students are the first priority. Mm -hmm. Has there been discussion of where the donation bins will be? That would be discussed at the next meeting, but okay. for sure, for sure. Some conversations around. Okay. But okay. for sure, for sure, it's going to be in the Tivoli okay. and, and Jason. The exact positioning within those buildings is still a little up for debate, but. This does, it does start next week, or are you guys planning to start in November? Next week. Next week. Okay. Is there any other items that you think of using with the funding? With the sustainability funds, yeah. um, we have considered some other ideas. A lot of our stuff that we're doing right now is in partnership with other areas that they have the funding and we're kind of just like helping them with it. But it's kind of our goal to try and use the funding for good. Um, so, I mean, we're trying to look at since it's an $8,000 budget using $4,000 this semester. So I think contributing roughly $1,500 to AHA week. Um, between the donation of catering and between matching the donations for the clothing and blanket drive is a reasonable amount. And then we can still have remaining funds for the rest one, of the semester. One of the, one of the projects that we were thinking of doing was another project was like a soccer. Mm -hmm. So that's how we wanted to use the funds for that as well. Well, yeah. um, when it passes, <laughs> um, have you worked with PR? I know Victor has been in contact with PR about a flyer for this, and then it's also going to go on the broader ASCP flyer once it passes. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, just going off of what you're saying, I've been talking to Victor, I'm starting to begin coordinating on the plans for that. Um, we're just like similar to what Amelia was asking about locations and details, we're still figuring that out, but I think after today, we'll definitely start getting a, get the ball. How fast are you guys going to get the location and where the boxes will be? It's a good question. Because like, what do you what do you think you need? They're just going to. I think for the purpose of flyers, just saying that they're distributed throughout the Tivoli and JSSB is going to be enough. If you're saying all the exact locations of, hey, there's a box right next to the tower elevator, and there's a box in this. Oh, no, you're fine. 
I think it's just like it's also time consuming to create the flyers, and it's like we need like we are like we also gonna share in the messages. Or oh, is there any changes that you guys want, or like this and that? So it's a lot of back and forth. So like, um, when I was communicating with Rachel, I thought this was gonna start in November, so I assume I, we had enough time. But since it's starting next week, it is kind of like a time crush right there. Like, hey, we need the flyer like uh, up ASAP since it's starting next week. Yeah. yeah, it's also over a range of time. So if we don't have like, if we only have like one flyer that's out on social media and a couple in the Tivoli just to start, we can expand and build upon that because it's a five week period that the donations are being collected. Um, and it's something that we could further advertise as well. Um, but we do plan on putting the boxes in the Tivoli and JSSB. So I think for purposes of flyers, that could be the information that you share on there. Um, Sorry, sorry, can I go? Okay. Yeah, um, so I was just a suggestion just so we can all be safe and take the time here as well. Um, possibly between PR and sustainability getting together. Yeah, absolutely. So we're coordinating our flyer times, seeing what we want, what we don't want, and that way we can get this arranged as soon as possible. So I think the miscommunication between me and you is the date of the actual week, mm -hmm. um, but uh, the closing drive. Yeah. The, PR timeline right now. The the Aha Week is in November. In November, but the, the clothing drive runs through the end of Aha Week. So okay, yeah. That makes sense. Thank you. Yeah. And then yeah, we can definitely. I know we have a meeting scheduled next week for eleven thirty on Tuesday, but if that doesn't work, we could definitely accommodate another time. So but we can explore that after yes, the meeting. Does that answer all questions, comments, concerns about this resolution? Uh -huh. People today, right? Yes. Do yeah. you want to go ahead and make the motion? Sure. A motion to vote for the sustainability resolution to work with the ACP. Seconded. All in favor? Uh, aye. aye. All opposed? <laughs> Abstention. Oh my God. That's great. Your yeah. Took over my role. Um, was that just a motion for the vote for voting on it, or was that supposed to be the vote? Yeah, so the vote. like the vote, yeah. like the vote. Yeah. Okay, cool. Vote. I just wanted to make sure for my own clarity's sake. Um, all right, so then the resolution goes ahead and passes. So, sure. um, the last thing that we have on new business is um, brother to brother came to us with a funding request for Afrotech. Um, the budget committee met and they did their presentation and we had quorum, even though there was only four of us there that were voting since there's only six members on the budget committee. So we went ahead and passed it to bring it to the bigger or to the broader council. Um, oh, what they were funding for? So it is for Afrotech, which is a tech conference that is geared specifically towards um people of color um so they talked a lot about how they went to this conference last year as well and last year um they got a lot of networking opportunities kind of learned enhanced networking skills cultural competency industry knowledge career and professional development were some of the ones that they highlighted um they had to do a lot of work on the back end as well um if you wouldn't mind pulling up their um into the their proposal that was sent in the group chat. Um, I thought it sounded like a very fruitful experience, and I might note that I might have a little bias because I had a friend that attended it last year and told me about um, the conference um, and how much they were able to gain for it. But I think it's something that it would make sense for us to fund because it seems to go with MSU Denver's mission of providing like equitable opportunities for all students. I'll let you further on that. Well, you know and he's been saying um, I was part of that meeting as well as part of the budget committee. Yeah. Um, it seems like they are echoing our saying, especially, you know, the big thing of making change makers since this is an avenue for not just um, of the African community, but African American community, but as Hispanic community, all minorities, especially giving us a voice and establishing more connections through the tech industry, especially here in MSU, we're having that computer science degree and not just that, but only in, in business as well. So it seems like it's one that's growing as well. They said that they were growing from last year. I think they've taken about 
six more and 10 more people. So it seems like- Yeah, they're, so they're looking to expand funding so that they can expanding. provide the opportunity to more students. Amelia? How much are they asking for? Because in the total <laughs> estimated cost, it says almost like $12,000. Yeah, so that's their total ask um, from us. My understanding from what Mike was telling me is that the max that we can give them as a student program um, is that they're eligible for $1,500 of our funding. So we can't fund the entire amount, but we can give them $1,500 towards that. Okay. Uh, great question. Good clarification. Yeah, okay. no, that's a good clarifying question. Um, did you, you had your hand up first, right? Question. Yeah. I just want to know for the record if there's any counselors who are part of Brother to Brother. Victor. This year. Victor. This year. Not necessarily like participating, but they they need people to attend certain spots they call me on. So are you part of the org? Oh, initially. Like I'm not on the volunteer. I'm I just volunteer, but I'm not like on the road when you're like you so you're not registered as a part of it. Okay. Just a volunteer just for voting purposes. Absolutely. Yes. I also understand that my vote might be a little biased as well. Okay. I, if you wish to abstain, that's still the I think I will abstain. Just to make it fair. Um, but just to piggyback off of what you guys were saying, um, I've seen them work really hard on presentations. I've seen them work really hard on trying to get funds, get people. They already went through all the possible avenues for funding, but they just asked for a little bit more. Um, that's why they were asking to come and talk to us, but also the people that I've seen that went to Afrotech last year, a couple of them got internships for the summer. So through Afrotech. Um, so I think it's really beneficial for the students to be able to go and network because it does seem like there is a payback, I guess you could say, for attending this conference. And I think you might have had this question previously, but they did exhaust their other funding before coming to us. For clarity's sake. Um, all right. Any other questions, concerns about this funding proposal? All right. If there's no further questions, um, I'm going to go ahead and motion that we fund the Brother to Brothers trip to Afrotech, granting them the $1,500 in its full that they're eligible for. I second that. Any objections? Any abstentions? I just have a question. Sorry, finish. Um, it's not an abstain. All in favor? Aye. 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 We're not allowed to give them any more than fifteen hundred. No. Oh. Third, third organization we do. Um, the funding goes ahead and passes just to finalize that vote. So. Congrats. Uh, Patrick, if you want to reach back out to them and let them know that we'll be awarding them the full fifteen hundred. And just to also clarify, um, if you guys were wondering, um, we're also not available to fund for their food or anything, and we requested the budget committee requested them to um, make a breakdown of in an Excel sheet of everything that they're doing, so we'll know where it's going to as well. Um, you know, just we won't. We Mike was very clear we aren't paying for any food or anything like that. Mm -hmm. May I ask a question then? Would it be beneficial then? that you all decide here what that money is going to? We do not have that exact breakdown yet, if I'm not mistaken, but they are going to get us an exact breakdown. Um, we we're not allowed to just donate the $1,500. It's on the thing. Yeah, it's on their breakdown. Does it have like the itemized like, yeah. you know, like receipts and everything? Well, not it's not going to have that, but what it's saying is, so transportation and flights is 1883. Transportation is, for a rental car is 678. Food can't, clearly can't do that. And then registrations, it does have conference tickets are estimated at $250 a person. Um, and 900 for the two advice. Can, can I ask why we can't pay for food? Matt, I think I, think I might be able to answer that one. So the issue with food is how do you, well, just like when we donate to these orgs, like we're told we can't just give them money to do what they want with it. We have to pay for the, like if we're doing food for the other events, like we have to pay for the catering to come but you can't really control that when they're out on like these kinds of trips because what are you going to do? Give them a yeah a credit card and be like, have fun. 
Mic check. I don't think, I think coordinators know not to give out the credit card yeah. so they can go and spend it freely with all due respect. But I could see just in terms of the guidelines with the Constitution, I could see why we couldn't just buy food, but I think that would be because food is expensive when you go on trips. Mm -hmm. So, um, looking at this breakdown, I don't see like anywhere where we would fit exactly fifteen hundred dollars. Um, but I'm happy to bring it to the table if we think we want to decide on the exact same thing we're funding, or if you guys think that would be something that's better to leave up to the budget committee specifically. Doctor, we had Levi something. first, and then no, Doctor Brown has uh, her hand raised. Okay, dope. Uh, Doctor Brown. Hi, um, I just I wanted to offer or ask, has anyone communicated with uh, Dave Barasa, who is the um, program or the associate director for student travel around this specific um, group of students going to this conference? Because I think that's really important if that has not happened around the funding allocations. We wanna make sure that we're working in collaboration with the student travel program and uh, Matt I think said earlier like we we can pay for things but it, it's really important that you're working with Dave around how that is going to happen and it may not be exactly fifteen hundred dollars but that right. can be the max that you are willing to sponsor and then Dave will have to figure out how like you someone will need to work with Dave around how to allocate those expenses. Perfect. Thank you for the clarification, Dr. Brown. I know that they did. They have been in contact with uh, Dave around this. Um, they have conference or getting the funding budget for committee it, has? But the budget committee has not been. Um, so I think before we make any decisions on what specific items we need to fund, we need to connect with the other funding yes. resources to see if they are already covering something specific um, with Dr. Brown being, bringing that up. Um, is that something that you guys want us to explore as a budget committee and then bring back to the full council to vote on? Or do you feel comfortable leaving it up to the budget committee to decide on after getting that information, Matt? I would say at that point, leave it to the budget committee, just like we've done with our events with PR, where we gave a budget and they didn't choose how they wanted to spend it. If that will. Uh, Two, well, one question. So the wording is no food specific, right? Yes. I believe in the budget documents, it says explicitly no food. So at this point, it does. Then just. Would be something worth looking into and maybe changing. But changing, yes. But as long as that's there, then that is, we should. Strict, stick with that. Stick with it, yes, it would be my advice. Um, all right, any other strong thoughts, feelings about just letting the budget committee deal with the exact breakdown of using their budget? I believe that is constitutionally what would happen because it's the same way for PR deciding. Yeah, Amelia. I was just going to say, I don't think I would agree with Matt. I don't think it needs to be brought back to the council for, for a vote. I think I, I trust y'all on budget. Yes. Thank you, Patrick and yeah. others. Um, the one thing I would just say is to be mindful of another funding source has a stipulation like we do. Because if we can't fund food, but only an, an, another funding source can only fund food, like making sure we can like fill in the gaps. I guess I, I say that so that we're not funding something that another funding source can only fund. Right. That's a great point. Yeah, so we will connect with those other funding sources and connect with brother to brother to see kind of what they already have funded and what they need us explicitly to yeah. cover. Um, and the budget committee will decide that on their own, unless there's any objections to that. All right, moving right along then. Um, we don't have our board of trustees here to kick us off with board and committee on announcement updates. So I guess we'll swing it over to Matt and Victor for SACAP announcements and updates. Um, not, there's nothing really pertinent to bring back to TSAG. It's just some of the projects that they've been presenting us, like they're trying to renovate or trying to find collections and funds to be able to install solar panels on the science building. Um, and they give us a breakdown of that, which is really cool. Um, 
we voted on that this morning to be able to move forward with it um, to show that SACAP has um, ACP and the facilities as support from SACAP. Um, they're again working on trying to get a vote on the ABOT um, voters, members for ABOT, and they're meeting with the general counsel for AHEC on Tuesday to check out the bylaws and see what's be able to get done. Um, AHA week, we presented it to the entire state cups so it can be a tri institutional effort. Um, I think that's all I can think of. Um, we also had Zach from AHEC come and talk to us. He talked to TSAC a month and a half ago about RTD. Um, so they shared some more information on that and kind of the numbers behind the scene of why it's an issue still. Um, but they're going to have a couple town halls coming up. And once I get that information, I'll try and share it out with everybody in PR to share it out to all the students. Um, and I think we might end up having someone from RTD actually come into our SACAB meeting. So if also anybody's interested. Perfect. All right. And uh, the, the, the first town hall is going to be October 28th. Okay. So please show up to that. Okay. So you can ask your questions to the, that's to be determined, but the date is for sure. Okay. Uh, Susanna, do you have a question? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Oh dear, but I forgot. No, okay. It was the LTD pass when you wanted that? Like spreading information and stuff like that. Oh, spreading information on RTD. Um, like, they're sending you over a flyer, correct? Yeah, they're sending us more information. So then you guys can just forward yeah. it. And we could just have it in the pack that's just there. Perfect. Mm -hmm. oh, all right. I know, uh -uh. I know that we were going to do a Try institutional survey about RTD and how everybody feels. How would you guys feel about having your yeah. like own data on the survey? Just TSEC sending out the survey about RTD, or is it is that too much? Because we already have the we're already working on the big survey for tri institutional. That's too much. If they are already doing a tri institutional survey, I don't know if it would be fruitful for us to be running our own at the same time. Personally. If we did it at a different time and did it targeted towards MSU number students specifically, maybe. But if you do two surveys to the same population about the same topic, it's going to skew results or like mess up results one way or the other. Or you're going to have people that don't respond. Those not that, yeah. On that, those who have been working on have thoughts, share it with us because then we can still advocate for different pieces to go in more of that master survey. Perfect. Small question for the advisors. Is the fee that's an opt in or right? Not from what I understand, yes. Okay. So there's no actual, like, if MSU Denver's choose to opt in, would you potentially know if there's a difference in pay for that fee versus like the other schools? Mm -hmm. Okay. Go ahead. So, APEC has a contract with RTD. Mm -hmm. And AHEC has all of the institutions, so all of the institutions are opting in right now. Okay. Um, because I read something on the the our newspaper, right, that I gave you. So I'm just trying to see if that is what what they're saying is like accurate and. Yes, it is accurate because all the numbers that were on the article he was presenting to us at the meeting today. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the things he was saying was like what students feel about opt-in versus mandatory and how would that go about? And a lot of the things were like uh, students really like the fact that they can put it on their tuition and have financial aid pay for it rather than out of pocket because that's where you know, $250 for bus pass is kind of crazy. So. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the kind of the talk was like what students feel um, if you, we gathered in information on our specific institutions and what we what our constituents thought about mm -hmm. um, the RTD pass. Yeah. I did talk to a couple of people outside during a tabling event and they were all like they would like to have the mandatory um, 
but again, it's a matter of like convenience, matter of safety. Like there was one, there was one student that. Yeah, we have Matt coming up first, but I just want to keep everybody in mind. This is an announcements and updates portion. If we want to get into the nitty gritty of the RTD pass, they are having informational sessions about it through SNCAP and we can have these conversations back in the office. Um, I want to try and keep the announcements and updates a little bit more narrow to okay. that. But if we want to have a further conversation about it, we can do it outside of the meeting. Did you ha still want to make your comment with that? And my shortened comment would be a probably have some more information if anybody wants to talk to after the meeting. Right. Did you still have your comment? I just wanted to ask if we need a referendum to send the survey to the students. I think since it's coming from SACAP, no, correct? Okay. Not the survey, but uh, if we were wanting to vote, yeah. mandatory feed out the referendum. Yeah. And he was not opposed to writing referendum, so. So. Dr. Brown, to comment? Hi, I just put something in the chat, but just so you all know, if you have any surveys that you as student government are interested in running or holding or whatever, uh, it's really important that you connect with Angelica Moreno. Um, in, she's the manager for assessment and evaluation in the student affairs office. But there's a whole protocol around doing surveys um, and it's for it's university wide. And so it's really important you connect with her because we don't want to like duplicate other things that are happening. And if you're looking for information, there might already be surveys that are happening. So just if that's a direction you all want to go, please, please, please connect with her. Um, and if this survey is a tri-institutional one, she may already know about it, but just in general surveys, talk to Angelica. Yeah, that was something that came up uh, in President's cabinet earlier this year. They passed something yes. surrounding that also, um, just to make sure that it's more streamlined, we're not sending out duplicates of the same surveys. surveys. to students. Um, <laughs> right, exactly. Um, so definitely keep that in mind, but obviously since it's, you guys are working with SACAB on that, uh, it's kind of a bigger, broader thing. Oh, sweet. Uh, let's go ahead and move forward to accountability committee. Will, do you have any updates, announcements? Yeah, um, I wanted to address two of the things that I was kind of told to look into. And the first one was the delegacy program. Hello, Mike. And I talked to Stephen. It seems like he almost had a fun with that. <laughs> um, and he told me that's a larger council issue and not just a accountability committee thing. I agree. That's why I came to him and asked him about it in the first place. Um, if that is, obviously, we will have a conversation after this meeting, so we'll see we, where we go from there. Um, so I'll leave it, leave that there. The second thing was the constitutional review. Me and Matt spent like maybe eight hours on friday we got out around eight or nine and we read through the whole thing added our notes and you know obviously we didn't change anything we were just adding notes on the side but seeing like how long this process is going to be and i don't want to give you a much sooner timeline and you know it's, i don't want to not deliver right I do say something of that magnitude and also having to pass it through like all the committees, get their input, get the whole council to review it, try to agree and then pass potentially new amendments or even a whole new constitution. It'd be the same, but consistent, right? Because there's some inconsistencies right now and some issues. So closing those loopholes. Um, I might be, I might have to just rewrite the whole thing because what I realized too is that every time we add amendments and change things, we're following the format of literally the US federal government, which is what James Vargas, the original writer, intended with the Constitution. That's where he got his inspiration to write it. And while I understand that that's great and all, it's very hard to keep up with go to this amendment that says this 10 pages down and then this is X'd out or something go back three pages up and it's just incredibly hard to read mm -hmm. it's incredibly hard to read document and i don't think that's feasible for 
us as a student government, I do believe that we should keep a record and I've actually tasked Brandon to open an archive and add every amendment we've ever passed and every version of the Constitution in there. But I don't think it's feasible as an acting living document to, for us as students to continue to go back and forth and find discrepancies and things that like, oh, this thing doesn't make sense with this amendment. These two sentences uh, contradict. And so it's I think it'd be better just to rewrite everything that we've had so far past and then close any loopholes and then present it as a more wholesome document. Um, that's uh, what I've concluded after many hours of review on this document. Um, any thoughts? So. What prompted this deep dive? Statements. Mm -hmm. Okay, I was just, okay, and then. And also actually some issues from last year. Um, we passed a lot of amendments our last meeting or one of our last meetings, if you remember correctly, we stayed like an extra two hours or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I believe in that rush to like pass things and like re rectify things. We all, there was also. Yeah, so we when we try to inject these amendments into that document, there's things that were overlooked as well. And so I'm me and Matt spent a long time finding a lot of well some inconsistencies and there's things that don't make sense anymore don't apply and like even in one instance we found the the constitution of violate itself in one of the portions where oh like my accountability committee was added into there and it said that you can't do that prior previously so there's a lot of issues and i'm trying to fix all of it and realistically, passing a document of that magnitude to TSEC will take time. And um, I, my timeline right now is probably till the end of the semester, realistically, to pass a, a document that's more cohesive and has more insight from everyone here. Uh, you made that comment just now about getting more insight from everybody here. First, I just want to thank you for doing this. I know I kind of was like, hey, I think this would be really great to for the accountability committee to do and you've done really great work with that so i just want to acknowledge that um is this something that i know that there's only three members on the accountability committee is this something that you would like a larger task force for not necessarily adding individuals to the accountability committee but maybe having like a constitutional review task force and we could throw a couple extra people on there to help rewrite specific things or help with that portion of it through a comment on that i've had this before it has been the abused stepchild of committees that no one like no one participated in the last two years. So if you do, you're very like, thoughtful who has the capacity to do it. Yeah. It is not an easy thing to do. Absolutely. Uh, so basically what Mike is kind of hinting at, I prefer to keep the committee a little bit smaller and then come to you because it's like the anecdote of having too many chefs in the kitchen and then right. I'm like, <laughs> going back and forth and you know like you know our forefathers oh <laughs> spent days shut in a room trying to figure it out and we did that was like a bunch of them i don't want that happening no definitely no i totally understand so, that i just wanted to make that offer but yeah. you didn't feel like you were overburdened <laughs> and taking it on all on your guys's own if you guys needed additional people so i just wanted to make sure thank you if you guys needed that it was an option that, uh, but to add to that, that's not saying I won't come to you for input. Right. I'm going to be like, hey, read it over. What do you think? Add your comments, you know, and we'll take that into account and see. Specifically more so to the chairs of the main standing committees, right? Yeah. Okay. So. okay. I would just say, Will and Matt, I mean, Will, you and I talked about this the other day. One, I think I want to commend you both for doing constitutional review. I can't tell you how many times I've done this in a dark room with a group probably this size. So it's a large undertaking. Two, Will, to what you and I talked about the other day, we're probably at a point where it's time to bring in an advisor. Right. And I would, I think I'm that advisor for you all. 
Um, as long as TSEC has no issues with that. A lot of that is because having advised student governments at three other schools and um, having a fresh set of eyes here, I can help you all with this. So I could almost be that third member. Ultimately, you all have the say in it, but I'm happy to do that with you all. Um, and I would, I, from an advisory standpoint, I highly encourage you all to make come meet with me sooner rather than later. And I'm willing to set time aside for you both, even if it's after hours. I'll stay until however long. We'll order food. We'll do what we need to do. And yeah. we'll do this. Direct comment, uh, Twink. I would say please do that because I think I'm on the founding document as one of the forefathers. <laughs> It was in a dark room with like four of us that just we had nothing to go off of because we had this stupid letter of destroying the old SGA. That was, our, that was our guiding documents, which was just hateful and awful. The person who wrote that didn't know what they're doing. So we made that into, we took where that was and made it into the constitution you know today. But it needs to be improved. Like it, 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 it was a labor of love, but needs to continue to evolve. Baby. Mm -hmm. Well, um which is old thank you for you know stepping up to the plate and you're definitely already included on my the steps in there so don't you worry i won't come to you <laughs> all right just keep it around thank you. is there anything else that you had to add to that will or is that basically <laughs> um i think for no that's it i just want to reiterate we're looking at the end of the semester passing or hopefully getting really close to rat ratifying the new document. And then I just want to make note of uh, Dr. Barone's comment and they're just emphasizing that she thinks it makes sense to have Stephen help you guys. This is the ones that say oh, that's volunteered. Um, okay, perfect. Uh, moving over to budget. Patrick, mind do you guys have anything that um, after sure. tech um, funding passed? So yeah, on the button. Check on there. Nothing too major. Just um, mainly just going off of the events that we did previously so this week. Um, thankfully, it's gone a little bit less than anticipated. Um, Stephen is able to get us snag us a great deal for the donuts there, so we were able to decrease the cost there. Our budget committee, we're looking at about twenty five thousand six hundred sixty one eighty five cents left over, which is a pretty good amount. Um, which is, I'd say we were looking to spending um, about 300, so we're 300 something. So we're talking about $80, $90 less than anticipated. Um, our, but then receipt trackers, um, as far as I know, that's what we have. And just gonna have to check on sustainability with that uh, $1,000 that we're gonna have to spend as well, just to make sure, let me know when or yeah. that. But yeah. other than that, Mike, do we have anything? No, you're in your trouble. Thank you. Uh, go ahead and move on to PR. Um, I just want to say thank you all. I know this is very last minute and stuff like that, but I think from a learning experience from this, we... Yes? Okay, okay. Just wanted to see we were on the same page still. Um, if we want to do an event like this again or something similar like this, I think it's more preferred to be like three weeks in advance that we don't like basically we're not up each other because it is very stressful and stuff like that. Um, we all spent like a whole week doing this and we also had um, decided to have a PR committee meeting on Monday because that is beneficial for all of us. From Patrick said 3.30 but I'm going to push it to 3.30 because you get out of class me. <laughs> the yeah. and, huh? yeah. and that works with you, I remember, right? Yeah, yeah from 3.30 to 5-ish, 30, depending like how long the meeting is. But it's just like for us to upcoming yeah. hands and like, and you all have access to the event calendar. So like, I just updated it now with a, a how, not a, uh -huh. a, a how week. <laughs> with a how week and the town hall, I just needed to with time See. and with the sign in sheet i thought that was a great idea like just for us to like hold each other accountable like hey this and that like now we know who's coming and who directly to contact to 
I think. Yes. And just bounce. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to comment real quick that the event was uh, really good and very successful. We had a lot of students come in and talk, and we had a lot of people who were interested uh, in the ESAC and helping out and stuff. The most common question after we were telling them uh, who we are and stuff was then mainly saying, like, how can I get involved? Yes. Oh. Yeah, so two things. One, going to answer that, but at the same time, shout out to, to the co-chairs who are there, both events. But sure, my man Levi here came here super early for everybody, Haley and Bubba organized and everything. So shout out to them for being able to make it. We, some of us weren't able to. Um, second of all, to you, how they can get involved. I was in discussion with Amelia who wanted to put a sign in sheet, um, probably an email name or whatever. That way people are able to sign in and we can hold that list if we were needed to anybody to any other. So we're coming to that. We did do that the second day. I have a list of about two and a half pages of names and emails. Handwritten. Um, we were going to make a QR code because we thought that would be easier, but then I thought maybe we should bring that to y'all instead. So for the event on yesterday, we just did a handwritten sheet, but if that's something you guys would be interested in creating, just like a QR code, just make it simple, like name, email. I Yeah, I totally agree with that. And it could also, like, it's like a Google Doc, and it could automatically be um, transferred into sheets. Time. Yeah, so it's right. like it makes all the job like ten times easier right. to transfer yeah. like each name and stuff. It yeah. wouldn't automatically transfer there. I do sheets. I do Google stuff. I don't really understand Microsoft that much, so that I also do Google. But okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if everybody has a bias on that, but I think that's all of us update. Just the next two events we have is on the fifteen and on the sixteen, the fifteen same time, eight to eleven. And then the fifteen is from twelve to three. Make it like a Halloweenish theme. So I have a lot of like stuff at home, so that I'm just gonna bring that. I need to get rid of it, but <laughs> but yeah. Uh, I think Amelia, were you still waiting for your comment or your question get answered? I was gonna make an announcement, but it's not about okay. Okay. Actually, wait. Yes, it was. Um, for the information that's on the sheets, do we have a way to like store that information? Because the whole reason why I like even suggested that to Patrick is so that when we do have events that we can like almost in, like, like have it like an email list, not quite like a listserv, but so that the people who engage with us the most, or not even the most, but like people who, you know, have yeah, a listserv, so, so who give us their information, we can like continue to build a relationship with them, especially if we have their contact information. <laughs> yeah. what, what was that? No, it was just like, no, I, I know what you're talking about, so. Um, but I think to kind of address that, Susanna had mentioned like getting the Google Forms and having it translate directly into Sheets and like just keeping a spreadsheet of all of it. Is that kind of what you mean? Was we're going like maybe like we have like us just to keep communication with that person. Like that person, like for example, like they call it Joe. Him, his name is Joey, and Joey wants to keep communicating with Levi. Levi is gonna have that communication with Joey, and it's like it just builds that connection right. and it just encourages Joey to like be and be involved or how to become a member in TSA. Is that what you were playing? Um, something like that. Or I just wanted to make sure that we had that information mm -hmm. and just storing it somewhere that would be safe, like maybe our. Sure. One drive. One drive. Yep, that one. Sure point. Uh huh. So moving that sheet that you're making, that we yeah. make. Can mm -hmm. it be transferred? I don't know. It's, it's Google. Google. Yeah, it could be a bloody Z. Okay. Where's, that, where's my tech people at? <laughs> <laughs> you can put the information to Excel street, especially and upload it. But uh -huh. it was uh, Vic, Will, and Matt. So that sheet was interested in participating in Student Gov, or was that like students thought they needed to sign in to get a donut? It was like. A little bit of both. It was kind of like, hey, I'm interested. And I was like, cool, put down your name and email. And then I was like, and it was like, oh, do you want to stay in contact with us? Put down your email. Um, so, uh, Matt, then Will. Oh, um, so I was going to throw out that that sounds like a bigger conversation for you about the delega delegacy program. Because they're back with us both. <laughs> well, because if depending on where we go with that conversation, that could tell us who's in control of it, who's supposed to be running it. Is it going to be PR? Are we creating another standing committee? Like, there's so many questions to get answered 
within that as well. So direct comment to that, the general consensus when it came to us doing the event is that uh, we, at the very least, we want to give information what TSAC is, so we give a pamphlet, but we also told people slash asked them to uh, put their name and um, email address and information on the seat, not only to just like get it, but also we were telling them that if they want to get more involved into how, you know, Aurora is working and everything involving TSAC, we can take down their information and add them later to uh, certain events, topics, and even uh, we brought up to a couple people about the delicacy program we have uh, in mind. In fact, a couple people here spoke to a couple students uh, explaining what it was to them, and they also put more information down for it. Um, but just let that be a reminder that we have that meeting today at 3 o'clock. If y'all can attend, give your input there. Um, anything else coming out of PR? Oh, gotcha. Well, did we have to yeah. Well, uh, Chip, comment on that. Uh, just as the accountability chair, thank you for everyone who participated. I think everyone here has at least attended one of them. <laughs> except oh, our, except our trustee. Yeah. Never mind. Uh, board <laughs> meetings all day yesterday, and we'll be in them all day today as well. So. Um, he did let me know, but mm -hmm. okay. Well, with the exception of Michael Warner, we mm -hmm. by the copy. So he's now your number two. Yeah. He was there in spirit. He gave he us his coffee. coffee. Yeah. Every, oh, yeah, you did give the, every coffee cup we got. Yeah, give the coffee. It was free coffee. Anyway, so did like it. anyway, thank you, everyone. Oh, bought the coffee. Thank you, everyone. Was it free? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all right. All right. All right. <laughs> What's your last point for PR? Okay. Sorry. And then also, Patrick Gonzalez came up with the wonderful idea of having a Halloween office party. That's like three weeks. So I feel more calm about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, and it's like, from 12 or 3 from that same time period, unless if we want to change it, dis discussing it during PR meeting on next Monday. Um, it's just like something socializing with students just for the last day of October. And the other one is for next month for Los Dias de los Muertos. I noticed it's on Friday and Saturday. So students don't really come on Friday and Saturday. I was just thinking of using the show box that we have right there and make it like Dia de los Muertos theme, putting a level one there. Just like something simple, because like, just that. Because we have a lot in October. Perfect. For the sake of time, I think if we have any direct comments on those upcoming events, y'all should attend the PR committee meeting, mm. uh, 3.30 to 5.30 Monday. Um, oh, I'll put it as a reminder to do that. Perfect. All right. Let's go ahead and move forward then. Uh, sustainability committee. Thank you guys for having me on that. That's great. I'm really glad that this is moving forward. It's going to be a really cool thing for t to be able to be able to part of. Um, if you guys have jackets, blankets you guys don't use, please bring it. Please donate it. I know you guys have a jacket y'all don't use. I know there's a blanket in your closet that you've been sitting there for ages. Or 15. Or 15. If please, you'll be able to. Um, in terms of AHA, we were delegated to try to find um, partners for hunger and homelessness. Um, they kind of emphasize the homelessness and housing part. So if you guys have any resources on what students can be able to do um, for, you know, uh, the general Denver area um, as a virtual partner for like housing assistance, please let me know. Yeah, building on that, uh, they separated us into subcommittees. So I'm going to be on the homelessness committee for like finding resources for that. And Victor's going to be on hunger. So if you guys have resources for that, direct them to the appropriate right. person. If you can, uh, I mean, if you bring it to the wrong person, I'll just pass it along to Victor. Victor will pass it along to me. But just for easier reference. And then if you guys want to be a part of uh, giving us input on AHA, we have to have a sustainability meeting, like I said, on Tuesday at 11. If you guys want to come yeah. show support. We're also looking at possibly tabling during AHA week. That would be a separate resolution, and that won't happen until later in November. But we're kind of seeing how student government can kind of fit in with that and when and where that's exactly going to be before we bring it to the full council. But if you have opinions on that, sustainability meeting. Um, that's it. Yeah, really. Thank you guys again. Um, quick, quick question. Has uh, the health center reached out to you at all? Uh, the health the health center is on the committee for uh, oh. so they're doing yeah. they're doing like a stew Narcan stew making kind of thing where you come and make a stew yeah. which is really cool they're they're making 
packages, like packages for people to be able to take with like beanies, jackets, food. Um, they said if you want to be able to help on that, we are more than, more than happy to be able to help. But I would like to, some of our donations go to those boxes as well. So please, 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 please. I'm going to go ahead and move over to open floor announcements and updates. Um, Amelia, you okay. Yeah, so I wanted to update that um, the Student Success Launch Committee with Dr. Simpkins, that vacancy has now been filled by Patrick. Um, I, because I, um, I shifted a little bit. Um, add a class on I think to add. Um, and then with that university policy meets um, during that same exact class, just on the opposite Tuesday. Um, and so I wanted to, Matt and I talked about this a little bit, but I wanted to streamline that communication a little bit more that I have class two to 315 every single Tuesday. And so university policy, um, we do need to elect a new rep. Um, and uh, with that then being said that I am the chair of budget and we are both co-chairing the civic engagement. Um, I don't know what civic this with Auraria. Chair of budget? Back, she's a representative. Not back. I was like, thank you. Patrick's chair of budget. <laughs> okay. So, so you're Mari, representative for up back. I was just confused. I wasn't sure if you were like yeah. chairing budget for something else. Up back. Lost. Okay, up back, perfect. Um, and so that along with the Auraria civic engagement, Thing that we are both co representing. representing. Thank you. <laughs> the diction is important. Um, and so I wanted to give those updates because that is a thing that we need to vote on and to also say um, that my capacity has increased when it comes to projects because I'm on my committee. Is reduced. Matt, I know you had a direct comment. Well, actually, more of a question What's the difference between up at University Poly and academic? Up back is the university budget. Up back, university policy, and then academic policy. So there's two different things. University policy is like what policies that go for the university, All right. but don't necessarily affect like the teachers, the faculty. Academic is how like AI is being implemented into classrooms. What is the processes and the policies for that? And so the first one's budget. The first one's university general health. I would say and the third one's faculty based. So I'm going to need to talk to Stephen about how to get in contact with the academic policy because I was voted on that and I have no idea who I'm supposed to contact. I don't either. Um, your comment for you for university policy committee. What is the timeline of when we need to have somebody elected into that? Is that something we can push to next week's agenda? Like inside then and how somebody starts serving on it? Or is that something that needs to be decided on? So then like today? I mean, I, are you asking me personally or are you asking logistically? Logistically. Um, I don't, no, logistic. I can't give you a certain answer logistically, but they um, have their meetings every other Tuesday. So, like, they just had their meeting on the 8th, and they won't have another meeting until for a minute. Not next Tuesday, but the following Tuesday, correct? They just had their meeting on the 8th, and they're not going to have another meeting until the 12th of November. So, it's once a month. Yeah. Okay. Um. So, so I think since it's not till the 12th, we can go ahead and postpone that. And yeah. can you go ahead and make sure you add that to the, the agenda? agenda. For next week? Um, any other open floor? Uh, Will. Uh, real quick, I just want to bring it to the attention of the council. We've been passing our meeting times usually late, and I think it's worth looking into extending the meeting so we don't have to constantly be like, Let's extend it five minutes. Oh, the five minutes are up. Let's extend it another five minutes. Okay, let's. Well, we were coming to that. We did speak to the advisors about that earlier this week. Stephen, were you able to hear back from um, Ned on if our rooms, if there's somebody in here directly after for the next half an hour for any no, of them? No, I wasn't. That wasn't okay, very call. helpful because, yeah. 
<laughs> we can talk after. I'll explain a little bit more about that. But I just I don't understand why they couldn't help. Let's maybe connect on that after, just because the concern was that they booked these rooms with the times of our meetings in mind. So Dr. Barone was worried that if we push back the meeting time, so we might be impeding onto other people's time. Um, and we just want to make sure that we're not like extending our meeting times and not, not actually able to run them that full time, if that makes sense. I, it does. It does. So I think we'll just continue to like Robert's rule it for now. Um, and we'll look into that a little bit further as we connect with him on the booking spaces, but that is something that we think in mind. Okay, second thing, um, me and uh, Pat, we're on SAB. We have a flyer. He's already aware. See, Pat, he's the PR chair committee here. Co-chairs. Um, and so I just wanted that to be put out there that we're going to start pushing for um, this if that will be on that board, like finding them. Mm -hmm. And uh, already talked to Pat, but I want like and Siobhan here too, excuse me, that we're going to, we want to push that flyer to you guys as well. Okay. Yeah, let me do this. Just put it on our Instagram. Okay. So on that, I already have someone for you uh, for SAB. Um, there was a student who ran it last year and also a check in with mm -hmm. Emily to see if they can also send an email to everybody who was there last year as well. Yeah. Oh, this is for that. Um, I, my breaks down. I have to go back to my board meeting, which is right over there. Okay. So, yes. Thank you for having me by for Wait, was there any trustee updates? Oh, trustee updates? Trustee updates? Oh, so for your next week. Yeah, do it now. Okay. Um, anybody else have any open floor announcements, updates before I do mine? All right. Um, so, just coming from the uh, Civic Dialogue and Support Committee, um, I've been working with Dr. Preuss in the Political Science Department on an informational session on elections and ballot security with the Denver County Office. That'll be next week, October 15th on Tuesday from 1245 to 2. That is after we are done tabling. So if you guys don't have class and you want to attend, I would recommend it. There's going to be free pizza. You can ask questions about kind of the security process that goes into like ballot processing. Um, there are going to are a couple of events that already happened this week and a couple of events that are happening. They had like a ballot breakdown and we've been doing those continuous ask your professor events. So a couple of those in the previous weeks, a few more coming up. I would recommend you guys stop by as student leaders. Um, just kind of check in if you have any questions, ask them um, or encourage other students to attend. I've also been working with a rare of votes on some post election support ideas. Right now they're working on like a ups and processing event which is very cute, but we're also trying to make sure we find a good balance of having the space for people who need like the support and the resources to find them without making students feel like they need to feel upset or feeling some kind of way about election results. Um, so we're walking a fine line there, but we're also doing an informational session that the political science department is hosting um, focused on the kind of what now, especially because we may not have direct results the day after the election. So just kind of navigating what happens from here. Um, I also have the delegate representative program on here, but you already touched on that. I think that's pretty much it. Um, unless I missed anything from that civic dialogue. I don't think there wasn't too much that came out of the meeting last week, but they are having another one next week. So maybe there'll be more coming out of that. Um, I think we're starting to focus a little bit more on the back end. Make sure students have the resources that they need kind of thing. Um, but that's pretty much it. Okay. If there's no more open floor announcements and updates, I'll move to faculty and staff seven. Any new questions this week that are relevant to TSEC? Okay. Anything else? Okay. Um, and last but not least, advisor updates. Hello, TSEC. Hello, <laughs> Steven. You all are doing really great in your meetings and all the work that you're doing. I'm so impressed. So first thing I want to call out, great work on the, the outreach tabling you did Wednesday and Thursday. Don't forget you have it again next Tuesday. And I think you also have something else next Wednesday, the Halloween Sip and Cider. Is that? It's the same thing. It's the same, same thing. Want. It's just I didn't change the name. Okay. So it's good name. great. <laughs> um, <laughs> You all are getting a lot of traction at the, those tablings, so do not be afraid to print out more documents or flyers or whatever than you need. 
um, because you're going to continue to do this and hopefully no one leaves the council. So that's a good thing, right? Um, really excited about that. Next Monday is another Latinx Heritage Month event. It's a Gordita food demonstration. So that's in the multicultural lounge in the Tivoli. So again, that'll be from 12 to 2 p.m. <laughs> Sorry. It's 12 to 2 p.m. in the Multicultural Lounge in Tivoli. Um, other things to note, um, as you continue to go through your processes here in actual meetings, um, I would highly encourage you all, mainly because your committee reports, those are good. You do a lot of stuff in those committee reports, but it seems like the folks giving the reports don't have enough time to go through everything before they're interrupted unintentionally by questions. So I would highly recommend you all, and specifically the chairs, allow the committee chairs to or the reports here and announcements and updates to, to go through their whole thing and to save questions until the conclusion of their report. That way it allows them to go through everything that they need to go through and folks can stay on the, the poor committee chairs can stay on target and not forget anything that they were reporting on. The last thing that I will encourage you all on is that between you did the meet the counselors event and you have a lot of these uh, tabling events, right? I would highly encourage you all and I can work with you all to do this to create some kind of I don't want to call it a process. I used to call them day of event plan forms, right? So if someone was responsible for doing the tabling, they knew, okay, I'm responsible for it. Then I would use that form to complete all the necessary information and lay it out in the TSAC office. So that way, let's say Haley and Levi then are responsible for coming in and setting everything up. They know exactly what to grab. They know what time to be there and everything like that. So I, I called it a day of event plan form. You all can decide what you want to do with it. Those are really for specific outreach initiatives or things or events and functions that you all do. I say that because on Wednesday I came to help out and we were kind of looking around for things. We we're look, trying to figure out where everything was and what we actually needed. But I think if you had, and this is, doesn't fall on the PR committee, I'm saying this as a whole for the entire council, that as you do functions, maybe putting someone in charge explicitly for that function, even if they can't be there, and having some kind of scripted document that has everything that they need to be successful to help set up, tear down, and what not for that time. So that's just a recommendation for you all. Actually, I was just looking at doing like making a folder or something like that because I looked at doing the courses and there's a specific on the MSU website to coordinate events yeah. and what kind of like a plans and organizations. But, that, you know, that's I think I already got it. Got a name for it now, I guess. Good. It's whatever you all want to call it. I call it the day of event plan. So it's all good. Um, I completely forget what we're doing up in announcements and updates. Uh, Aurora Votes is also doing a, they're calling it Assassinating Democracy event, but it's an event about, it's a panel on political violence. Um, they're having a former secret <laughs> come and answer some questions as well as some faculty members about um, the impact of political violence. And they wanted me to extend it to the council if you guys had any specific questions that you want. Um, or that if you think students want to know about um, from the Secret Service member or the faculty members that will be speaking there. Um, just whatever kind of panel questions you guys had. That's something you guys can get to me afterwards. I just wanted to bring that up now before I forget. <laughs> Tony's husband. <laughs> oh, yeah. so, um, that's all. You know, the secret, the secret service boo. Um, all right. Does anybody else have any announcements, updates that you guys forgot to give during an open floor? And with that, I motion to end this meeting six minutes early. Second. Any objections? <laughs> <laughs> Abstentions?
Nada. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good job, folks. Good job, Good job, folks. 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 Good